wound healing. So first we discuss the stages of wound healing. The first stage is your hemostasis. So when there is an injury, it causes your disruption of your endothelium. Now this disruption of the endothelium leads to your vasoconstriction and exposure of your subendothelial extracellular matrix now which encourages the platelet to activate adhere and aggregate this process leads to the formation of your platelet plug which limits your blood loss this platelet adhesion also leads, uh, leads to the activation which causes the release of your alpha granules which consist of your protein and various growth factors like your transforming growth factor beta, platelet derived growth factor and your vasovascular endothelial growth factors. Now this causes your deposition of extracellular matrix, chemotexis, epithelization and angiogenesis. Now at the same time the injury also activates your coagulation cascade which results in the formation of your thrombin that causes your fibrin generation and stabilizes the platelet plug which forms the scaffold for the infiltrating cells. So this is your hemostasis phase. Now following the hemostasis phase occurs your inflammatory phase. Now the inflammatory phase can be divided into two parts your early inflammatory and your late inflammatory. So early inflammatory starts from day one or day two and it the platelet activation causes the influx of your inflammatory cells mainly the neutrophils. It also causes the influx of your polymorphonucleosides. Now they also release vasoactive amines like your histamine and your serotonin which causes your increased vascular permeability aiding in your infiltration of the inflammatory cells. Now in your late granulation phase which occurs during day 2 or day 3, now monocytes appear which differentiate into your macrophages. Now this macrophages plays a very vital role which acts as your phagocytic cells. It also helps in the protolytic enzyme synthesis which causes the debridement of the wound and it is also the producer of your cytokine and your growth factor which causes your fibroblast proliferation and your angiogenesis. So if you look at this image, this is an image of your inflammatory process where you can see the wound is being infiltrated by your neutrophils and your polymorphonucleoside. Right. Now moving down to the next phase is your proliferation. So it begins at the day 3 and lasts for around 2 to 4 weeks. It is consists mainly of your fibroblast activity. Right. So this fibroblast activity causes the production of your ground substance like your proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans and uh, production of your collagen, angiogenesis and your reepithelization. Now wound formed in early phase is your granulation tissue and later part there is an increase in your tensile st uh, strength by the increased collagen synthesis by your fibroblast. Then some fibroblasts may differentiate into your myofibroblast which consists of your myoepithelial cells. Now this myoepithelial cells have an important role in contraction to bring the edges of the wound together. Now if you look at this diagram over here, we have the new blood vessel formation and your granulation tissue and the monocyte cells which differentiate into your macrophages. Right. Then we have the last phase which is your remodeling occur 2 to 3 weeks and 
after two to three weeks and it lasts up till one year. Now in this phase there is a maturation of collagen, your type 3 collagen is replaced by type 1 collagen until a ratio of 4 is to 1 is achieved right so 4 would be your type 1 and 1 will be your type 3 right so this maximum tensile strength is achieved 12 weeks later in the wound and it represents approximately 80 percent of your uninjured tensile strength right so if you look over here the probably uh, remodeling phase of your wound healing where you have your collagen formation where your type 1 collagen replaces your type 3 collagen which is responsible for your tensile strength type 1 to type 3 ratio eventually becomes 4 is to 1 right so this were your some important questions and concepts from your wound healing now moving down to the next part your healing in some specific tissue so first we discuss regarding the callus formation which is a form of your secondary healing right and it mainly occurs when the non-operative management of your fractures are taken then we have a hematoma so what are the phases in your bone he uh, healing we have a hematoma then we have a phase of inflammation followed by your hematoma being replaced by your soft callus now there occurs an endochondral classific uh, uh, calcification not classification calcification right which causes the formation of your heart callus now this heart callus is your woven bone and eventually the last phase is your remodeling where your woven bone is being replaced by your lamellar bone right so this are your phases of your wound healing then in your nerve your distal to nerve injury occurs your valerian degeneration and proximal degeneration moves as far as your node of Ranvier. Then regarding the tendons, the intrinsic healing, the two important concepts over here include your venicular blood flow and your synovial diffusion and the extrinsic healing includes your fibrous adhesion between your tendon and the tendon sheath. Now the next important concept is the types of wound healing which are your primary, secondary and your tertiary. So the important points with respect to your primary wound healing are the wound edges remain opposed, it is a normal healing and there is a minimal scar. In contrast, in your secondary healing, wound is left open and it heals by granulation, tissue, contraction and re epithelization There is increased inflammation and proliferation and it forms a poor scar. And in case of your tertiary wound healing, wound is initially left open and then later a secondary closure is done when there are favorable conditions. So speaking of this, the factors that affect your wound healing. So I've taken this table from your Bailey and Love. It could be your local factors and your systemic factor. So the local factors include your skin tension, hypoxia and ischemia, vascular insufficiency, lymphedema, contamination, presence of infection, foreign bodies and radiotherapy and your systemic uh, uh, factors include advancing age, obesity, malnutrition, smoking, then your diseases like your diabetes mellitus and connective tissue, immunocompromised conditions like AIDS and your medic medications like steroids and immunosuppressants and chemotherapy. Right. So this was some of the important concepts with respect to your wound healing.